Hello, great people. It's nice to be here again. And I welcome you to another beautiful episode of Touched by Faith. My name is Olufunke Owo. As it is our custom on this program, we don't do anything until we hear from God. So right about now, the word of God will be coming to us through our Father in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejare Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Don't go anywhere because today's program is definitely going to change your life. Unable to sleep? God wants to speak with you. Tune into Redeemer's Network Television. Redeemer's Network Television. Pastor E.A. Adeboye, redeeming the time. We will be taking a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things work together. All things work together for them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. There's nothing that happens in the life of a child of God that is not going to lead to a testimony. As a matter of fact, someone says, testimony is the baby of a test. That miracles are babies of impossibilities. All things work together for good to them that love God. Including afflictions. According to Psalm 119 verse 71, Psalm 119 verse 71, David said, it is good for me that I was afflicted. He said that I might learn your loss. And the bigger the problem, the greater the testimony. According to John chapter 11, Verse 39 to 45. John 11, 39 to 45. I wasn't there, but I could imagine the shout of joy when Lazarus, who had been dead and buried for four days, came jumping out of the grave. The bigger the problem, the greater the testimony. By the grace of God, in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, we are used to miracles. So many that many a times I had had to warn us not to begin to take these things for granted. When somebody stands up and he says, oh, glory be to God, I have been barren for 15 years, now here is my child. Um, if people will say, mm, please sit down. Why? Because we have heard of someone who has been barren for almost 30 years and is now saying, behold my twins or behold my triplets. The bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. And so I have good news for someone here today or someone listening to me today that that big problem in your life 
will soon result in a very big testimony. Amen. The Redeemed Christian Church of God, a global church. For more information, visit us at www.redeemersnetwork.tv. Welcome back. I know that that word has really touched your life and it will begin to manifest and yield good results in the name of Jesus. So for more messages by Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboe, kindly visit our YouTube channel or visit www.redeemersnetwork.tv or any of our social media platforms. And then for your comments and testimonies and feedbacks, you can also reach out to us on any of our social media handles as displayed on your screen right now. Last week, the Ashubitans were here on this program to, to share with us how they encountered God with an act of faith, a little act of faith, and then God came through for them, and cancer of the blood became a thing of the past. When this happened, Ianolua was in secondary school. Today, Ianolua is a graduate, is a university graduate, doing well for herself and for the Lord. Stay with us as we bring to you the concluding part of this wonderful mind-blowing experience this family had and again it will confirm to you that God is real the person may not live two years after the diagnosis. If the person is going through treatment, the health status will just be fluctuating because of the effect of the cytotoxin drug on the person. By the time they start those um, chemotherapy, the, the health status will go down. The person will be weak. They will have to be treating some other things to keep the person stabilized health wisely. Maybe malaria today, uh, body head tomorrow, they will have to be doing that for that person to be stabilized. And the effect of the chemotherapy also affects the air. The air will be falling off on its own. The moment you comb like this, it will be falling off. So most of them, they, they, they result into bad head. And uh, if they feel it, the person will be using wig for the rest of her life. If it's a man, the person can just uh, leave it as skin, skin shade forever. So the person may not be able to live five years without treatment. She's free, totally free. She's been delivered. As her name implies, Iyan Oluwa. When I was pregnant of Iyan Oluwa, and I was about to deliver. Uh, I couldn't push further doing labor. They had to rush me on emergency CS to the theater. And on the theater table, while I have already been uh, anesthetized and I was already going to another world entirely, if you have gone through uh, anesthesia, it's just like a gradual. Uh, transcend to another world. You, you, it will be as if you are climbing a ladder to another world. So I was under anesthesia when I had a cry of my baby, and I was hearing the the voice of the personnel in the theater. Thinking, "Are you one more you there?" I'm about to be here in the theater. Oh, I just said, "Daddy, missing." Even when I couldn't push, when I was able to push, the baby was not coming. 
But when I have already gone under an ICC and I couldn't push, the baby decided to come. And that is why she is Yanulua. Most years, under an she came. She came on her own. When they are still prepared, preparing to section me, she just came. That was why they made that comment that you want me to be your day theater. Or they were glad they listen. Instead of you to come out, even when she was strong enough to push, that is wonder. And the truth of the matter is that if I have to be spending on that health status, that, that health challenge, I don't know how, how much of millions would I have spent. So the money that I even have been acquiring, have been gathering since the day I started work, might not even be enough to take care of that status. I mean, that challenge. So I just look at myself that, what else do I want God to do for me that he has not done? Let me leave this and face the work of God. That was one of the things that encouraged me to tender my uh, retirement letter and I face the work of God, supporting my husband to move on in the work of God. And God has been faithful. I have never lacked anything. God has been feeding us. He has been taking care of us. And our own health has been wonderful. It has helped my faith in so many ways. Many times when I minister and I share the testimony, it has encouraged so many people to hold on to God. I have told many people, you know, that will come to me, ah, this is their problem. By the time I narrate our home, and I, I told them what God has done, they will be calm and they will be strong. There's somebody who has been anxious and forgetting and be thinking that all hope is lost, the hope will be revived and the person will, will be serving God and will be happy again. So, and I think that one is even more than me working in the hospital. Even though I've also uh, led many people also to the hospital because it's not everybody that has that kind of faith to stand. So, I've led some people to, to the hospital to receive their healing also. I've also helped so many people in the hospital to receive their, their sound health back to the glory of God. And when I also share my testimony for those whose faith is not as high as my own, it has also lifted up their faith, it has also increased their faith to look at it that there is nothing impossible for God to do. The year that my parents finally told me that I was diagnosed with leukemia, that year I was already doing it in the work of God. I was not exactly strong anymore. And I can remember that particular day it was during devotion. And, I, and my dad was like, yeah, if there's anybody that should thank God more in this house, it should be you. And I was wondering why he said that. I was actually wondering. And I told him that, do you know that you were diagnosed with leukemia? That was what just prompted me up. And that was the reason why I actually dedicated my life to Jesus Christ in 200 level. That was the reason because I felt that I was not being fear. The God that has helped me, that saved my life, that if by my mom's calculation I would have actually graduated secondary school, I would have died if he had not saved me, if he had not, if he had not healed me. I would have died before graduating secondary school. I'm now in university, certain level, I'm now doing anyhow. It's, it's, it's not fear on me, it's not fear on God at all. So I decided at that point, I decided I was going to pick up myself, pick up the work of God, and start serving Him. Yeah, good afternoon, my sister. How are you? Thanks, sir. Yeah, go ahead. What do you do to your friend? Sharon. What is the problem with her? I want you to put her in your prayers. She's going through challenges. She needs some encouragement. Hello, my dear sister. How are you today? Your friend mentioned you to me. And can you spare us a moment? 
She told me some things. And God is in control. There is nothing God cannot do. If only we can hand over the situation to Him. By the way, are you born again? Sir, I'm too young to be fanatical. Yes, I go to church when I can and I try my best to be able, but that's all the used to it. My sister, let me explain some things to you. Excuse me. Let me please Shalom. 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 It's okay. Let her be. It is a strong one. But God is in control. God will fight this battle for us and hand victory over to us. I'm always very happy, very excited to share this experience with people. Most people, most of my friends, or most people that I'm familiar with, did not know anything till I shared the testimony on in camp in, during the November of the coast. And immediately they were, like, they were calling me. That day, that day, I didn't, I didn't have my phone on the other. But maybe I got back to my phone to, to my seat. I just started seeing messages, a lot of messages from my friends. Hi, I know. I didn't know this happened to you. Hi, oh, God is good. So like, all the, all, all of that. It gave me the, the morale to want to share, to want to always share that testimony because I want people to know what God has done and what God can do in their own life too. So, to so anyone that is, that is going through something like that or that feels that God has forgotten them, God has not forgotten you at all. God has not forgotten you. God is still there. He's still the same. And His word is here and Amen. That's what the, that's what the um, open heavens of today said. Is what is said to is what is there. Is healing is healing word is still very much very potent, very much potent. So all you need to do is to believe and to hold yourself. God can still use a doctor to help you. God can still use a doctor to heal you, but it is still God that is giving the power to you. I just concluded that God used that uh, instance of medical checkup to help us because it would have been gradual decrease. And, and depreciation in health and maybe before we knew it it would have been it would have been worse between ourselves and our sister that we did the test together she was thinner i was just looking at her maybe she she wasn't eating well because then she was not eating well if you give her food she won't eat much so she was thinner than her sister at that time which she wasn't i mean she was not as thin as that before before she went to school so that test was just an avenue god just used that situation to bring out that problem for us to identify it and attack it yes so i just thank god so doctors god can use doctors to help so many ways also as he has used them to help us realize it and that is they are the ones that help us to know where to direct our prayers like uh, the testimony of a sister that just rushed to me on sunday uh, afternoon after church service like that and just called me she had gotten home already he just called mommy are you still in the church i said yes i'm coming i'm coming coming and when she came and i took her to a corner and i and she opened she said i noticed a uh, something like a boy about two weeks ago and it has now like so when she got home and she was she pressed it something like pus came out and as she cleaned she saw something whitish which now moved like a uh, maggot is that maggot he said mommy it is maggot there is no maggot Maybe it's uh, sloth, yes. When on a wound, there can be something whitish that stick to the skin. We call it sloth, and it can hinder wound from healing fast. So I said, maybe it is sloth. She is also a nurse. He said, no, me, I know what I'm saying. It's not sloth. And as you open the place, and I use a toilet to clean, and you see the thing move also. On a living soul, on a living person, maggot in the breast, I said, wow so i helped her 
I use the toilet tool and I pick the thing and I pull it and I just say boom, it just came out like that and the hole it left was so deep and it dropped on the floor and it moved like this. I said, wow. I said, sister, please just be pressing God. This is cancer that God has delivered you from. Cancer of the breast. If that thing is not being removed, it will be eating deep, deep and deep, and it can destroy the whole breast. That was how God delivered her from cancer. So, cancer can come in that form. The enemy can attack with anything to cause cancer. What they will diagnose in the hospital, what they will see is a cancer, but they do not know what has happened to the person spiritually, which I believe also is what has happened in the spiritual realm concerning her house but God averted it. As many outside there that are going through life without God, without Jesus, they are just uh, they, 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 they don't know what they are missing. They are missing a lot because if not for Jesus, I myself I would have died long time. And like I said, I've experienced miracles in so many ways. And the experience of the past gave me the uh, faith, the strong heart to continue that God who did in the past is going to do it again. So if there is anybody who has not given his life to Christ and is going through life and is facing challenges here and there, uh, the Bible says, say to the righteous, it is well. But for the unrighteous, those who do not know God, uh, it is disastrous to go through life without Jesus. It is dangerous. It is dangerous to go through life without Jesus. Because there are so many things in this world. There are so many arrows going about in the daytime, in the night time, that can just hit anybody anytime if the person has no Jesus. But the Bible said that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So for those who have Christ, they are secured. But those who do not have Christ, they are exposed to a lot of dangers, day and night. So I want to encourage as many that have not known Jesus, that they should come to Jesus. Tomorrow may be late. Whatever you may be going through, when you come to Jesus, He will attend to you. He will take care of you. He will carry your matter on His head. And He will settle you permanently. And He give you peace. But if you do not give your life to Jesus, the trouble will multiply. The Bible said it. That they that run after another God, their sorrow will be multiplied. The book of um, Psalm 16, verse 4. The sorrow of those who do not know God will be multiplied. But they that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. And for Christians that are going through storm of life, difficulties here and there, I want to congratulate you because you know Jesus. And anybody that is in Jesus, he said we should be of good cheer because he has overcome the world for us. It is in this world that we have tribulation, we have trials, we have temptations, we have all sorts of confrontation, opposition. But when you are in Christ, you are secure. Your life is secured. You should be rest assured that everything will work out for your good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. So remain in the Lord. Don't don't lose focus. Face Jesus. Look and live. When you look to Jesus, you will live. When you have Jesus, you have all things. Health, good health is your portion. Financial breakthrough is your portion. Peace is your portion because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So there is no storm, there is no problem that can overcome you as long as you are in Jesus. He is the master over every storm of life. I want to encourage you to keep moving.
keep pressing forward and i pray we will all finish well and strong in jesus name hmm. to my god cancer of the blood is just a small thing that it can just take away in the twinkling of an eye so whatever it is that you are going through whatever challenge you are thinking it is so big and uh, there can't be a solution why don't you run to god today ask for his help and they will come true for you till we come your way again i remain olufunke Owu. join us same time same station next week for another mind-blowing episode of this fantastic program have a wonderful week ahead bye Network Television.